Richard Calhoun and Creekside Realty, 40 years of working with buyers and sellers here in Silicon Valley. We're here today to talk about the real estate marketplace. We'll get back to this slide in a few minutes. This is the first key indicator. What we're doing is we're looking at inventory, available listings, and that's the supply side of the economy. And a subset of the supply side is the number of new listings. And the number of new listings is just what's come on the past week. And then we get into the demand side, which is the number of offers in the past week. What we're comparing it to is the five-year median. The five-year median is 15 through 19, the last five years before COVID, which were all five good years, by the way. If we were normal, we'd be right on the yellow gold line here at 100%. So inventory, you can see right now for the macro area, which is Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, single family homes, condos, and townhouses, we're only at 80% of the value that you'd expect it to be. The new inventory coming on the market has been historically right at where you'd expect it to be. So it's not not a lack of sellers coming on the marketplace. But what we're having is a large number of demand and the demand has been above normal. So you can see for the most part, if you take a rough number, we're floating somewhere about a 20% above the demand that you'd expect to have for the time of year. Here is the dividing line. To the right of the dividing line is data from last year, 2020. And if you notice over here, you have 53 weeks. I added an extra week to get the separation. So in 2020, you have to subtract one to get to the accurate week. So we're right now in week number 30. 33 in 2021. This is week number 34 in 2020, even though it plots at week 35. This is now looking at the single most important indicator, which is days of unsold inventory. Days of unsold inventory is the supply demand ratio. If it was normal for the past five years, normal is the median of those five years, you'd be right at the gold line. You're below the median by quite a bit. Normally on graphs, that's a bad thing, but with supply being less than it normally is in relationship to the demand, that gives you a hotter marketplace, a faster marketplace. So basically, as you go down on this graph, the market gets faster and faster. Basically, starting at 40 days is up to 80 is what I consider to be a balanced marketplace. So now when you're down here at somewhere like 25 days, that's a strong, strong seller's marketplace. And you can see that it was strong basically ever all last year and all this year. But you can see at the beginning part of the year, it slows down, but so does the median. But once we got past the beginning part of the year, it's been exceptionally fast. And normally it starts slowing down somewhere right around a week 11. Maybe you can say week 17, it becomes a little more pronounced. But this year it's been basically pretty flat. Spikes like this are the holiday July the 4th, so they're not a big deal. This is your overbid ratio. This is how much the buyers are overbidding on all the different transactions. And basically what we were doing is we were going up this way, which was improving, but then we turned around and came back down. So if you look, the orange line that's right through here, that's last week. The gray line is two weeks ago, but now we've turned around and we're going back up. So we had had a little bit of a pause and remember sale price takes about five weeks to get there. So if we're talking two weeks ago and three weeks ago, you're talking about eight weeks ago, there was sort of a pause in the marketplace. Now it appears that pause ended and we're starting to improve a little bit. And that basically is why I wasn't too alarmed is it, it was a slowdown, but it's not a slowdown as much as we normally have, it was not a shift in the marketplace. This is the appreciation chart. Basically, the yellow is the most part is the highest number we've had. But what's interesting is a few areas are coming back up now, like for the moderate low area, which is like Milpitas, North Valley, Berryessa, Blossom Valley, and Santa Teresa. You're, they're basically tying their peak appreciation for the year. Saratoga Las Gatas is, and I have it highlighted wrong here, is starting close again at 26.9 on the week of the 9th, July 9th. It's now at 25. Again, down here in South and San Mateo County, the Bay Cities, which are like San Carlos, Carlos, Belmont, Burlingame, Redwood City, all those base cities grouped together, it's now at 21.8%. So it's coming back up again. So you can see there was a little bit of a pause and now it's re rebounding. That corresponds with my theory that we're in a year like 2017, where we were doing the normal slowdown. And then all of a sudden we had that second round of appreciation from August to uh, Thanksgiving timeframe for a second round of appreciation. That may be what we're going to experience 
experience this year. Time will tell. We're back to the first slide. This is just URLs on how you get here. The green is what I call the root URL to get to the meeting live. You put in the year and you join me Saturday morning at nine o'clock to get to the handout, which is posted. You add the word handout and the eight digit year month date code. So that'd be 2021-0821. And to get to the archives, you just put in, you drop the word handout and put in the eight digit code. With that, I'll pause and answer any questions anybody has on what I've gone over, and then we'll slow down and get into a little bit of detail. So does anyone have any questions they want to ask? I'm hearing silence, so I will go on. So now what we're looking at is the key indicators. We're looking at it in the different major components that make up the macro data. So you have single family homes in both counties. You have condos and townhouses in both counties. In San Mateo County, because condos and townhouses are of smaller number of properties, I only, on here, I'm only reporting the Bay cities. I report the Bay cities and I also report Daly City, San Bruno. But to give you rough numbers, the Bay cities are probably about 150 transactions. The North San Mateo County area is probably only about 35 transactions. And then the rest of the condos are scattered around the whole county and it's not enough to really track. So what we have is the data this week and last week. And yeah, there's a little bit of shift, but not much. Santa Clara County single family homes went from 21.3 last week down to up to 28, 22.8 this week. You know, it's a shift, but it's it's not what I'd be worried about. When the market shifts, it moves at about three quarters of a day for every day. So if we were coming in and looking at somewhere like four or five day shift from last week data to this week, that's when the alarm bells start going off. This is just statistical fluctuation, no big deal. And it's sort of supported by in San Mateo County, the slowdown is half of one day. If you look at condos and townhouses in Santa Clara County, the slowdown is essentially two days. You know, it's five days in San Mateo County. You know, that's the level at which it starts catching my attention. But again, it's only one area. You're only looking at 130 properties, 150 properties. You know, I wouldn't be concerned about it. You do look at the frequency of overbidding. This is how common is overbidding. It actually went up in Santa Clara County. So even though the market slowed down, the frequency of overbidding went up. Now, you might initially think that's contradictory. But remember, this is sort of current data because you don't have to wait for escrow to close to get the magnitude of overbidding. We need the close sale price. So this data is about five weeks old, so it's not in sync. But again, you're looking at anytime you have 82, 83% of the people getting more than they're asking for, that's an insanely hot marketplace. Anything over 50%, I consider to be a strong seller's marketplace. San Mateo County is essentially unchanged. You come down in the same with the condos and townhouses. And then you have the magnitude of overbidding, and basically that's unchanged. That's you average out all the transactions, including the ones that below asking price, including those at asking price, as well as those above. And you can see you're getting 108% in Santa Clara County, 110% in San Mateo County. Condos are less at about 104%. So that just gives you sort of a breakdown of what's making up the different components. This is a different type of breakdown. This is looking at the raw numbers. And here we're looking at the entire county. And I've pointed this out a couple of times now, and I'll probably stop doing it. But in my data for Santa Clara, uh, for San Mateo County, I only use 300 46 out of 406 properties. And that's because you have a few properties out in La Honda up a line along Skyline where you don't have enough to be statistically significant. And if there's a shift in those marketplaces, it really doesn't impact where the bulk of the buyers go. And then the same in the condos marketplace, I only look at 139 units out of 185. In Santa Clara County, I include all those outlying areas in a miscellaneous group. So in Santa Clara County, I include the weird outlying areas in the county data in San Mateo County. I don't. It's just a decision I made way back in 97. I probably should have carried the miscellaneous in San Mateo County, but it's it really doesn't impact the data. So you're looking at the number of inventory. You can see last week we had 1,861 units and both counties, both types of properties. This week, we're at 1,910. So you've gone up about 50. What's interesting is all 50 is in single family homes in Santa Clara County. Now that doesn't concern me because what I expect to have happen is with the extra inventory, extra buyers will come out and buy up all that inventory. And we'll see that days of unsold inventory really didn't go anywhere because you need the inventory available for a weekend, essentially, to get the offers in. In Santa Clara County, in both counties, 
counties to some degree in single family homes, we're probably limited right now by the amount of inventory. So first, inventory has to come on the market to place enough to get rid of the pent up demand. And we're nowhere close to that from what every indication I have. Moving down to sales, here we're, instead of work, looking at this week and last week, we're looking at one week and five weeks. And that's to try to get a sense on whether the market is accelerating or slowing down. So in the past week, we only accepted 100 offers. In the past five weeks, we're at 560. So, you know, the past five weeks were a little bit more offer friendly, a little higher number of offers than they were in the past week. The same in Santa Clara County. We had 226. If you multiply that by five, you'd be at 1100. And in fact, we were at 1256. Come over to condos and townhouses and you have the same thing. Multiply this by five and you're at 180 versus 210. So a difference of about 10%. Multiply this by five and you're at 560 versus 590, a differential about 5%. So that's basically saying that there's been fewer offers in the last week than you would have expected. But basically, the number of offers maximized typically in our normal cycle, the five weeks before Memorial Day. So we're way past the peak. So the fact that the market's slowing down a little bit every week doesn't bother me the least. Now you look at days of unsold inventory. The red line is the hottest, which is Santa Clara County single family homes. And I'm focusing on the five week here instead of the one week. And you can see the market slowed down in all the categories across the board. And, you know, that's because the lower number of sales. But the reason I focus on five weeks is one week fluctuates too much to really be able to tell a trend. So you're going to get a lot of bounce in this one week data. So 22.8 days, I mean, that is a super hot marketplace. Again, I consider 40 to 80 days to be balanced for the this market area. So to be at 22, that's almost insane. But we were down at like 16 earlier this year. And that's why you saw the graph going up, the market slowing down a little bit. But you know, what's the difference between 16 and 20? You still have multiple offers. You may end up with three or five offers instead of 10 or 20 offers, but you still get multiple offers. And more importantly, you still sell the property. Now we're looking at days of unsold inventory, the key indicator. We're looking at the three micro market areas. I call them micro markets, but the, th the three major sub markets that I follow, which are single family homes in Santa Clara County, condos and townhouses in the yellow line in Santa Clara County and single family homes in San Mateo County. And you can basically see, you know, you, you know, it's a point of reference. You can see the huge impact that the announcement of COVID had on the marketplace. But once we were able to sell properties basically right here, May, and in fact, once we could even start accepting offers on vacant properties and there was some fudging of showing occupied properties, the market started improving a little bit. And then when you got to May, the market really started to pick up because we then could even show occupied properties. The market heated up, gradually heated up through most of 2020. This is the typical slowdown that you have at the end of the year holidays. And then we took it off this year and we've been just basically on fire and we haven't had the normal slowdown. You know, it's a little bit higher here, but I mean, if I was to call this graph, I'd call it flat. You know, it's, it's hard to know, you know, you can see how much bounce there is and there are seven data points for every single week, but you sort of have to do the general line. And again, if you consider, and oh, I moved this up, this, this, the pink should be moved all the way down. I did that to update the data. So this red line here should be from 40 to zero, zero to 40, from 40 to 80 should be white. And then from 80 to and above should be blue for a nice cold marketplace. So this is all in a strong seller's marketplace. Sorry about the shading being off. Now we look at the heat map. This shows you the different micro markets. This is showing days of unsold inventory. This is single family homes only. So the redder the area, the hotter the marketplace is. And you can see Foster City, which is a very, very small area at 8.4 days. So that's about as fast as you can ever get. Cupertino was down at, I think, 5.6 or 5.9 for a short period of time. But this is basically st statistical fluctuation just because of the size. So if you look at this, the fastest area that matters is the affordable, not really the, the moderate low areas, which are Milpitas, North Valley, Berryessa, Blossom Valley, and Santa Teresa sitting at 12 days, which is going to be right here. And then again, down here. So that's sat that, that's going to be close to saturated red. My saturated red is at 10 days, but 12 days is just an insane marketplace. 17, I would call insane marketplace. 
30 up here for South County, East San Jose, that's starting to be close to a strong seller's marketplace. So that gives you some concept. These areas are more than twice as fast. So that just gives you a concept of where we're at. This is the time looking at inventory. This is, and just for those that might be new, active inventory for me is active inventory without an underlying offer. A lot of people, including the MLS, include offers that have a pending transaction where the list agent is asking for the property to be continued to show. The MLS argues that property is available to be shown, so it's active inventory. My argument is that property is in escrow. There's a primary buyer. A new buyer can't come in and buy that property unless the first buyer defaults. I mean, that property really isn't available. I know a lot of consumers don't want to look at those properties. I know a lot of agents don't show them. So I've made the decision not to count those. As long as you're consistent, your statistics are good. And I've been consistent since 97 on this. And that was actually one of the major reasons I've got into doing this because of the beginning part of the year, when my definition of available inventory is actually going down because the buyers come out of the woodwork before the sellers do, the MLS inventory is going up because you're having a huge number of pending transactions. But anyway, you can see at the beginning part of this year, we actually had a surplus of inventory, despite what the media and consumers were saying, compared to the five-year median. Then we were at the five-year median for a long period of time. And then starting at about week 16, 17, we were below. And this is the whole macro. So you should be ex up here at 2,250 properties and you're only down here at 1,750. So we're 500 properties short of where you'd expect to be. That's pretty significant. This is looking at the number of new listings that are coming on the market each week. You can see last year, we actually had a surplus number of listings. And to some degree, this was the sellers coming on the market later in the year because of COVID. They couldn't come on in mid-April, mid Mar all of March and even early May, sellers were hesitant. But once they realized the market was strong, we basically had above normal inventory coming on the marketplace, which helped keep the market in check a little bit. Then we burned through that. So you've been having normal inventory coming on the market every week. And when you look at that, I mean, in my eyes, those two lines are essentially right on top of one another, despite the slight fluctuations. And it's because, you know, this year you, you have only one data point point, this is a five-year median. But I mean, you can't get a better data match than that, which says we're basically in a strong marketplace and we're exactly where you expect it to be. Here's the number of offers. So you can see the number of offers has been consistently above the five-year median. These two strong dip downs that people might co comment on, this is July 4th and this is Memorial Day. That's a holiday for only one day. And when you're only looking at one year, it only impacts one one week. When you're doing a five week and you can really see it here in, on July the 4th, you were impacted for two weeks. And that's because in some weeks it's, you know, like week, and I'll just make up a number, week 26. And some weeks it's week 27. This year, it was the late week because July the 4th was on a Sunday and you can't be later in the week for the, than that. This is moving on to the number of closings, which shows the same thing as the number of offers of, except delayed. There's a little bit more fluctuation in this because of number of days the recording, holidays, buyers tend to like to close at the end of a month because their prepaid interest is lower. But with the low interest rates, that really isn't a factor right now. But you can see we've been closing more transactions than you would expect. This is the frequency of overbidding. You can see the huge drop down between the current year and last year. So this year's much higher. I have not yet, but I am very curious and I've always said this, I'm amazed at how much fluctuation there is in this data point. I'd expect more consistency. I don't think I have done this, especially in these last couple of weeks back here, I might have. At times, I think I might have done Santa Clara County single family homes instead of the macro data, but you know... I here, I know I'm doing the macro data and you still have the fluctuation. It's just surprising to me that there's that much fluctuation. This is the frequency of overbidding in the different major micro market areas. And if I was to look at this, I would actually say San Mateo County has been, single family has been increasing quite a bit recently for whatever reason. You know, you went from 75% to 80%. Now that for a lot of people may not sound like a large increase, but it gets very hard once you start getting above 75% to keep going up. 
because there's some overpriced turkeys. There's some reason that sellers will sell below their asking price. So it's hard to, you know, these numbers will never get to 90, uh, never get to 100%. The highest I think I've seen was in Cupertino at like 96.3%. You know, and I, I think it probably only took one property selling at asking price to not get 100%. So, you know, this is pretty significant. I would say Santa Clara County condos is pretty flat. I might argue it looks like it might be rolling over here. Same with Santa Clara County single family homes, pretty flat, clearly rolled over here. But now look, it looks like it's turning around. And that's sort of what I was talking about earlier in the uh, talk today is we had a definite slowdown, you know, and when I say a definite slowdown, you went from 85% down to maybe 80 and a half or 81%. And now you're back up to maybe 81 and a half percent. So, you know, there are changes, but not huge. This is the heat map showing you the actual percentage for all the different areas. And um, you can see Cupertino sitting at 93%. You can see Milpitas at 84%. You can see every area is pretty hot. The slowest area is the San Mateo expensive areas at 55%. That's still fantastic when you think about it. This is showing the magnitude of overbidding. And again, you can see the sawtooth. And again, it just surprises me on how much of a sawtooth there is. There's actually more sawtooth in the magnitude than there is in the frequency but it's still surprising. This is the magnitude of overbidding in the different areas. You can see the red of the color, the higher the overbidding. So Cupertino, Sunnyvale, the San Mateo County peninsulas. And then a lot of it is very close together, somewhere right around 107%. You know, some fluctuation, you got some at 109%, 105%, but there's quite a bit right around 105. South County is not used to overbidding. So it comes in a bit, a little bit low at 105%. We did this graph at the beginning getting and I bring it up because I'm going to go into another one that's related to this. But again, you can see the purple line, which is the current line, is no longer the worst line. Last week and the week before were worse, as well as one of the early dotted lines. I almost think it's March 27th was the worst in the last 22 weeks. The dotted line up here is the best month we've ever had. And the blue dotted line down here is the worst month we've ever had. So now we have it here. And so this is the last 12 weeks. So now you can see a little bit better. You can see how all the dotted lines and dashed lines were up here, and then your solid lines started coming down. Here's on July 31st, this yellow line coming through here is was probably the worst line at that time. Then you went to the gray line, which is August the 7th, and August the 14th is this orange line, which is essentially tied. And now you're at August 21st, and down here you're a little bit tied, but up here you're above, you're above up here. I overall would say it's, and down here you're clearly above. So I would say we've been improved again over the last two weeks. So this breaks the trend of the market going in one direction. This is the sale price that so many people are focused on. The middle number is the median price. The number on the left is the lowest 10 percentile. The number on the right is the highest 10 percentile or the 90 percentile. So in South County, you can see there's a million dollar range from the lowest priced homes to the highest priced rooms. And basically the middle number is where the bulk of the homes in the given area are. And about one, you're only up about one third, but 50% of the homes occur between these two numbers and 50% occur between these two numbers. This is a graph that shows the time going back. And just for clarification, all the months start on the first of the month and go for 35 days. So they end, and that's only basically for the eight on 2018 through 2020, and it will be true for 2021. In 2017 through 2012, I started on the first week after the first of the year, which is why the end dates here were slightly different. And then back here, I did what most people do, which was the calendar month. And basically what happened with the calendar month, I realized that was bad data. And the fact that you never, you weren't taking into consideration the number of weeks, number of weekdays, number of weekends, that kind of thing. By doing 35 days in the middle here, you took care of that. But this was confusing for people. They never knew when I did. So then finally here, I got the metrics that I'm using now that I like, which is I start on the first of the month and I go for five weeks or 35 days. That's my calendar month. The exception currently is 2021 because we're, we do not have 35 days after August 1st. I could just do 21 days, which I've considered doing. But on volume, you want to get some indication where the volume 
volume is. So in this case, I go back from the 20th, last night at midnight, I go back 35 days. So we have 15 days from July and 20 days from August. But what it does is it allows you to compare these numbers here to the historical where you're planning on being. And the highlighted numbers are the most important one. So inventory is basically at 500. And you can see in 2017, we actually had less inventory than we do now. If you come down to average days on the marketplace, 15, median nine, we're now at the best we've ever had because 2111 was 17. Last year was 20 and nine. So the median was the same, but the average was longer because there were still some properties that have been on the market for a fairly long period of time. If you look at days on sold inventory, 22.8, I mean, match it up to 2017, 22.4. That's pretty much a match in my book. If you look at the number of offers except 30, uh, 35, that you now have to come all the way back. It looks like maybe 2013 you hit it, but you have to come back here to 2011 and 2010 to get bigger numbers. And it's a little uh, almost an oxymoron. It's something you wouldn't expect, but the number, the volume of transactions we've had has been going down essentially on a straight line with obviously some fluctuation ever since I started taking the data. And the reason that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, or I called it an oxymoron, was because the value is increasing in size. We have more and more homes. So why are we selling fewer and fewer properties? It's because people are staying in their properties for longer and longer periods of time, in part because of Prop 13. That may change in time with Prop 19, because now once you're over 55, and once you have the 250 exclusion level per person, you're actually better off buying your neighbor's home, transferring your property tax, getting 100% of the future appreciation. Whereas if you stay in your existing home, you're only getting 55% of the appreciation because Uncle Sam takes 45%. Of course, there's the exception of you if you wait until you pass and it, your heirs get it, they get a free step up in basis. So they get that too if you move. So as long as it's not too inconvenient, moving fairly often has become the financial incentive versus staying put with Prop 13. So we may turn around and see the long-term growth go up going forward. Coming down to overbidding at 108%, again, that's a pretty high number. You're basically, I think that number is 106% in 2011. So you're outperforming it. At 82%, you're outperforming 2017. So again, that's the best year that I think you're having. But I mean, these are record highs as far as I'm picking up. Maybe someone can pick up a number that I'm missing. But I think both of these, both magnitude and frequency bidding, overbidding is a record high for this this time of the year. There have been higher numbers, but they've been more in the April, May timeframe when you expect the market to be robust. Sale price continues to go up, but you can see that we're down to 1.6 for the median. For sing And I didn't say this, I don't think at the beginning, this going back in time is Santa Clara County single family homes. I picked the biggest micro market because it's usually a pretty strong indication of what everybody else is doing. So you're at 1,600, which is 1.6 million. That's a record high on this chart here, but we were higher earlier this year. I think we even broke, and I'm not sure on this, but I think we broke 17, uh, 1.7 million. I thought it was like 1720 or something like that, but we could go back and look at that. So anyway, that lets you go back in time. This is comparing July. This is the last full month that's available. I'm not going to go through that in detail. And this is just a chart to show you the kinds of challenges I sometimes have, because I meant to do this last week, but I don't think I did. This is my inventory from my MLS. You had 763. For two days, they said I had 933 listings, 931. Then I went back down to 763. And you can see each of one of these numbers. What happened was they accidentally included transactions that are coming soon on the active marketplace for those two days. And if you didn't dive into the data and look at it and catch it, it's like, what the heck's going on? So that gives you an idea of, you know, the amount of inventory that's you know, going to be coming on the market. It's fairly significant, but, you know, it takes time for an agent to prep the property and things like that but it's sort of an oops when the MLS puts the market out there and no longer designated them as coming soon. With that, I am done opening up for anyone that has any questions for me. Hi, if you go back three charts, <laughs> is it possible? Because there was 
I didn't see um, long enough on that chart. I think that's the chart. I think it must be this one. This is one I went over pretty quickly because this is the month of July. So this is essentially old data. I was looking at mid-July to mid-August on the previous slide that I spent a fair amount of time on. Is there a particular okay. question? Because you can go back and it will be archived and you can- No, I just, sure. No, I just wanted to make sure I missed it. You know, went bing too quick so that's fine okay I'd maybe go back. yeah maybe there's a pause on between the time it takes to get refreshed on your screen yeah it's okay now not a problem thank you it's fine You're welcome. any okay. other thing any other questions okay. from anybody hi well when you talk about the uh you the last chart uh -huh. on the uh, uh, new, the coming soon yes, uh, versus sir. active. Yep. So I think the difference is quite a bit. It's about like $200, the 200 home. Uh, closer to 150. Yeah, 150. So do you think that we need to actually uh, look at it, the coming soon number so we can have some predictions that the, the, there are more new homes coming in? No. Be, the reason I say no so quickly is I don't have the historical coming soon used to be off the MLS and not available for anyone to get. So we had no idea what that number was. Oh, I don't have histor no. historical numbers of coming soon's and I can't go get it. A coming soon really isn't available for the consumer. It's really not even available for the agent. It sort of entices them for the most part because very few of them will sell in the coming soon category. So I, I believe that to have comparison and data, it's better to go forward with what you have historically, because there is no right answer in statistics. So you want to have consistency. So if we always had coming soon, you know, that would be one thing, but we don't have coming soon historically. So I chose to ignore it. Okay. You know, if someone, so, if someone could come up with a good argument of why we need to know what that number is, I'm all ears, you know, but we well, don't have- I mean, is that, is this coming soon is going continue to keep it like that? So we can, you can keep the data go forward. Well, you can have the data going forward, but you can't compare going back. The yeah. other pro the other issue is the MLS that I get my data on off of, which is MetroList, doesn't allow you to search for coming soons. Now they may mm -hmm. change that. And this was actually sort of an indication to me that they're working on changing it because they populated and made the mistake. Bay East, where I search for clients, shows coming soons and doesn't distinguish them from come, you know, from on the marketplace. MLS listings shows coming soon and active as separate, and you can separate them. So mm -hmm. each MLS right. does it differently. And you know, okay. yeah, the, I got it. I think the reason coming soon is out there is because of clear cooperation. Right. Agents would put the sign on while they were getting the house ready for staging. And, you know, if you think about it, you know, this hundred, I think the real number is closer to 170, mm -hmm. but that's what we sell in one week. So you basically have one week of inventory coming on the market all the time. And that, that to me made, made a lot of sense. If it takes mm -hmm. you a week to put your sign up, get your inspections, get your staging, get mm -hmm. all that done in a week. If you, if you want to put your sign out, you're going to put your sign out. I, you know, I do it the other way. I don't put my sign out until I go live on the MLS. So I do all my staging and all that, not on the MLS, not advertising in any way. So I don't need to use the coming soon category, but I think I'm in the minority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It just Coming soon is going to stay anyway. Coming soon will stay anyway, but it will most likely not be in my data. Yeah. If if MetroList makes it easy where I can search for coming soon and not coming soon and do both of them, I might do that. But I think it doubles my work and I don't think I get anything out of it. And frankly, what you need is several years of data. And, you know, yeah, I'm planning on being in the business about another 15 years. But at this point, I have something like 23 years of this data so there's no way I can get equal number of data. And I don't, you know, again, if, if someone can come up with a good succinct argument on why coming soon data is important, I would go off and get it even now somehow. Yeah. But I can't, okay. it, it's always been there. So mm -hmm. it's not new. It's just new that we're identifying the properties. Yeah. Okay. Be, well, anyway, if it's the active, it's already including the previous coming soon. Eh? 